Let's render some stuff with a custom block entity renderer. Alright, we found us back in the challenge once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom block entity renderer to our mod right here for our gem polishing block entity. And it's going to be pretty freaking cool. So in the tutorial mod block entity package, we're going to make a new package called renderer. There you go. And inside of there, we'll make a new Java class called the gem polishing station block entity renderer let's just change this to gem polishing block entity renderer because that's already a name that's long enough this will implement the block entity renderer interface with the gem polishing station block entity here as its type hover over this implement the render method and there we go we want to make a constructor that's going to be the public gem polishing station block entity renderer right here there you go with a block entity renderer factory not factories this one right here the block entity renderer factory dot context we're going to call this the context over here and the constructor can stay empty that's fine but there we go now in the render method we can do a whole host of different things now the first thing basically or what we want to do here with a block entity renderer in theory we can render all sorts of different things we can render items we could render blocks we could do all sorts of things on this particular block entity now what i just want to do is if this particular entity has an item stack either in the input or the output i would just want to render that on the 3d model you know there is this like a little tray and that is exactly where i want to render the item now for that we actually need to somehow get the item out and for this we're going to make in the block entity a new method right here that gets the item stack so this is going to be a item stack get render stack this will basically get the stack that is supposed to be rendered now here we're just going to say if the stack in the output slot is empty then we're just going to return the stack of the input slot and if it's not empty then we're going to return the output slot basically it's going to first show whatever is in the input slot if there's nothing in the output slot but as soon as there's something in the output slot we're going to show that now get render stack method that's fairly straightforward but we need to override a couple more methods this is extremely important we want to override the mark dirty method and we want to call world dot update listeners at this position with the get cached state because the state stays the same get cached state so basically it's going to be the same state that we have before get cached state and then a flag three this will basically update this particular block over here and that's quite important what we also need is and i usually just personal preference i add those two at the bottom we want to overwrite the to update packet method as well as the to initial chunk data method in the to update pack method i want to call the block entity update s to c packet that create passing in this and in the to initial chunk data nbt i'm just going to call the create nbt method right here and that should basically make it so that it synchronizes via the server and the client and this is probably going to be displayed because the entity renderer is client only this is all only happening on the client so that is why we need to properly make sure that this also synchronizes here we're going to make a ren item renderer we're going to call this the item renderer equal to minecraft client dot get instance dot get item renderer exactly right then the item stack is going to be the item stack. This is going to be the stack that we'll want to render. This is equal to entity dot get render stack. That's the method we've just created. And then there's a couple of things that we want to do. The first one is matrices dot push. Basically, we are so more or less pushing some changes and those changes will apply as soon as we pop it. I'm not too familiar with the entire rendering system because it's it's a whole freaking system that's crazy. Uh, but the idea is that now if we change this, if we change things in the matrices, so for example, if we say we translate this to 0.5f and to 0.75f and to 0.5f right here, or we say matrices.scale, so we scale this down to 35% of the size in all directions, right, like this, then that is going to happen to our stack once we render it. And we actually also want to turn this around a little bit. So I believe that it should be enough if we do the following. If we do multiply rotational axis dot positive x rotation degrees by 270. I think that should be fine. Although I'm unsure if it's going to rotate with the entity itself. I do not believe it will. Because our custom block doesn't have a facing property. I do not believe that we can easily get the rotation of that, but that's going to be okay. That is a little bit of a different thing. Now we want to call item renderer item. We want to render the stack over here. We want to say model transformation GUI. 
then we need a custom method that is the get light level method. I'm just going to copy this over. This is just there so that the item won't appear shadowed inside of, you know, the rendering. So we're going to call the get light level with entity.getWorld. After the get world, we also want to add the entity.getPosition. After the second closing parenthesis, we want to say overlay texture dot default UV matrices, passing in the vertex consumers, passing in entity dot get world, and then passing in a seed of one. And with that, we can then say matrices dot pop. And now all of this should apply over here. We now just need to connect the entity renderer to the actual block entity. And to do that, we want to go to the tutorial mod client class. And here we want to say, we want to call the block entity renderer factories, factories, this one dot register mod block entities dot gem polishing station block entity gem polishing block entity renderer colon colon new and that is it and with that we should now have an item that is going to be rendered here in the block entity so let's jump into the game and see if it works all right finally back in minecraft as you can see right now there's nothing here however as soon as i put a raw ruby and you can see there it is the raw ruby now it is on its head and you can see it also updates to whatever is in the output slot now the reason being is because it does not really conform to the way that you rotate this because right now the block always faces the same direction so regardless of the way that i set it down basically like the, regardless of the way that i look and place it down it's always going to let's actually get something that has a little bit of a facing you can see it always so for this you could add a facing property to the block itself this is not strictly necessary this is just of course an example to see how a block entity renderer would work and it's pretty freaking cool as always of course all of the code is available to you in the description below and that's actually it for this tutorial next time we're going to make a custom wood we're going to add a bunch of blocks needed for some future tutorials hope to see you there so yeah